Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and welcome to lesson one of our wire wrapping master course that will hopefully take you from a complete beginner to having taught you everything that I know. So uh, it's a free program here on YouTube um, that's just a way of if I could go back in time and guide myself through learning wire wrapping in what would have been for me the most efficient in like least nonsensical way of learning things. Uh, so welcome, whether you're a beginning wire wrapper or whether you're an old pro, I've been wire wrapping professionally since 2008 and I feel like any time is a good time to brush up on the basics and the foundation techniques. So today, um, if you're a new wire wrapper, a lot of things can be really overwhelming because there's just a wealth of information out there. So if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, or if you're watching this in the premiere, hey everybody, uh, leave a comment in the premiere and I'll try my best to be, future Vaughn will be answering questions and comments live over in the live chat and hi, hey, I'm past Vaughn and I'll continue demonstrating. Uh, or you can email me at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com and I'll try my best to be helpful to you uh, if you have like specific questions. But things like uh, the really specifics we're going to touch on but we're not going to go super in depth because I'm hoping by the end of this video we'll have a couple of pieces like finished. So um, I'm going to start by introducing you to the tools that we're going to be using. Um, these are all the different tools that I ended up using for all the different techniques that we'll be going over, but primarily the three pliers that I use the absolute most um, are my round nose, my flat nose, and my wire snips. So these are flush cutters, so they're flat on one side and pinched on the other. They're, I get them from the, like, the electrical department um, as opposed to paying twice as much for the same thing in the craft section. So I get these for like five or six bucks. Um, links to everything will be down in the video description below uh, to help get you started shopping. These are my flat nose pliers that we actually took to a grinder to make one of the tips very, very thin. That way we can get in nice and tight. But I've linked the, the same brand that I use here down below as well. And then these are my round nose pliers. When I was shopping specifically for round nose pliers, because there's a whole lot of like pressure that get, gets put on the nose of the pliers, I look for a box hinge because, uh, and I don't know if this is the correct term, but there's some pliers that, like this one, are kind of like a scissor hinge. There's just the two sides, which are great for if you're just holding on to something, like with our flat nose pliers. But whenever we're twisting and stuff, I really like the box hinge because it keeps my tips from coming out of alignment. So, um, but yeah, these will be linked down below as well. Now, think tools that are nice, not essential, but really nice, um, are the bent nose pliers that I usually use in just about every project because they help me to get into tight areas without having to hold my hand in a really twisted or uncomfortable way. And I made custom handles for these out of thermoplastic, but that's not at all necessary. In fact, I did that more for when I'm weaving chainmail, but we'll have a, um, a master course on chainmail probably after we have completed the wire wrapping segment. These are stepped flat nose pliers or tapered flat nose pliers that I get from Rio Grande. Again, they'll be linked down below. And again, they're just great for getting into tight little areas and I'll be demonstrating with these in this video as well. And then these are my mandrel pliers. Um, I do recommend if you fall in love with wire wrapping, mandrel pliers and stick mandrels like this are not completely necessary. Even now I use knitting needles almost more than I use my stick mandrel. But my mandrel pliers, really help me whenever I'm making pendants or it, the main thing is whenever I want my loops to be consistent I'll come and use these guys but they don't have as much mobility as um, using my round nose pliers and a little trick that I did on these ones is you can see there's a little notch in there that I put in with a metal file and that way I can use that as a gauge to try to get my loops to all be the same size every time so I'm going to set these off to the side and again, these are just what I have. Um, you don't have to be using the same kinds of tools, but I'm just leading through the way that I go about these things. That does not mean it is the right or only way. So we're going to be teaching you how to make wire wrapped links in at least five varieties, uh, like five different ways of going about it. 
but I also wanted to take this as an opportunity. Let me see if I can't zoom in just a little bit more. Oh, that might be too much. No, you, you know, it might be fine too. So here I'm using a 10 millimeter bead on an eight. This is a 16 gauge wire. The larger the number, the smaller the wire is. So this one's our 16 gauge. And that is American wire gauge, but again, we'll get more into that in the future. This one here is a 16 gauge as well. I just wanted to demonstrate on the two different size of beads. And then this one is an 18 gauge. So you can see it's just a little thinner, very, very minor difference. And I'm gonna to try to get this from a couple of different sizes. I get all of my wire from parawire.com. This is not sponsored. I just really enjoy their products. And I get all of my jump rings for the most part, either from uh, American Chainmail or Chainmail Joe on Amazon or the Ring Lord. And all three of those seem to function within the realm of standard wire gauge with some exceptions. But again, that's probably more information than is really necessary. So we're gonna be going over how to do a simple link. I'm gonna show you guys how to use bead caps. I'm gonna show you all how to make a double loop link like this one here trying really hard to not have it be blurry. I'm going to show you all how to do wrapped links. Like these three here. And again, we have these in um, 18 gauge. No, this one's 18 gauge. This one's 20 gauge with a double loop. And this one's 20 gauge with a single loop. And as we make them, we'll talk more about my reasoning behind doing some of the things that we've done. And then I'll also show you all how to make an elegant wrapped loop like these ones here. Um, and we'll be going over how to join our links into things as well as how to um, use them in conjunction with some charms and in making them into earrings. So let's go ahead and get started. I know that was a really long intro, but my heart is always with the beginners and something that may seem obvious to a lot of us who've been crafting for a while. You know, as a beginner, you don't even know what you don't know. Like even now, after all this time of being a professional wire wrapper, I've barely scraped the tip of the iceberg of things that there are to learn. So let's be patient with each other and let's keep going. Whenever I'm picking what wire gauge to use, I try to go with something that is as thick as what my bead will accommodate without there being a lot of internal pressure. Because sometimes, especially if you're using like a faceted bicone like crystal, um, it, the, whenever you come in to do some of the bending of the wire, it can actually chip the bead from the internal pressure. So here I have four millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, and 10 millimeter beads in um, glass and amethyst. Just that's not super important, but just in case you're wondering, um, these little four millimeter beads are actually some of them. We get to play my favorite game of ah, will it fit? And sometimes it will, <laughs> but sometimes it doesn't. So I'll often go through with one of this is one of the bead trays that we sell on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Yeah, like that one doesn't fit. So I'm going to set it off to the side. But if you're having trouble and your beads just are pretty consistently not fitting onto your wire, I would normally go at least up a bead size. Yeah, so that six millimeter fits on there. And I don't want it to just fit on. I want it to also have a little bit of freedom of movement. And that way I know it's not um, causing pressure from within the bead. Typically, uh, the larger the bead is, the thicker of a wire I'll want to go with. Like on these 10 millimeter beads here, I really enjoy using a 16 gauge wire because it's quite a bit more substantial and it gives like a nice like just balance to uh, you know, the proportion of wire to bead ratio, um, like thickness, but a lot of that is just stylistic. If it looks the way that you want and if it's holding together and it is not like snagging or uncomfortable to wear, then you did it right. So I'm going to be using this 18 gauge and whoops, one of our eight millimeter beads. And I like to work off the spool if 
that's kind of uh, clumsy for you, go ahead and just snip off about, oh, para wire is affordable enough that we can, we don't have to be stingy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and snip off about four inches. I always save all of my scrap wire because I melt it down, um, and we'll be going over that in future tutorials, but you can, even with the enameled stuff, you can save it up and sell it to like a scrap yard sometimes. Though we will, uh, if you if you subscribe and like sign up for our newsletter and stuff, like if you're interested in finding out about more tutorials, further in on our master course, um, we'll be going over uses for scrap wire. So not to encourage hoarding or anything, but um, <laughs> I kind of save all of my scrap wire. <laughs> like not to brag, but I'm a total hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> so here you can see I have bent with my flat nose pliers a 90 degree bend and I use the pressure of my finger against the wire to try to help me get a nice bend there. And if you can see here on this wire, the wire snips kind of leave a pointed end on some of the wire. So I'm actually going to come in and snip it with the flat side and that's just going to help us to make a really nice closed loop. I don't even know what that was. Okay, well gravity still works. Um, and I'm going to come in. I was going to try to be professional y'all but I can only maintain that for so long. I'm just coming in and bracing my thumb against the wire. I'm going to curl it around and then reposition my pliers. And I'm doing a little bit of a vroom vroom motion with my hand just to get that twisting. And we want our loops to look like a balloon on a string as opposed to like, if we didn't do that 90 degree bend, I'm just gonna demonstrate on the other end of a wire. And we just shaped it around. How that kind of just looks like the letter P or a Q, I guess or if you're a, a, a P if you're dyslexic. Um, and I found that this doesn't quite hold together as well, and it will often make my beads be a little akimbo, like skewed. Um, so do whatever you like, but I just, I try to have a reason for whatever it is that I'm doing. So now we've made the first end of our loop, and we're going to thread our bead on. And let's go ahead and do this one with the bead caps just because it's truly the same exact concept now these are some little bead caps that I got from Fire Mountain Gems and uh, if you're hoping to sell jewelry or you want to make a wide variety of jewelry for as little monetary investment as possible I do have linked down in the video description some mixed bead and bead cap packs that can just give you a really great variety in that way um you know, I, I'm currently working on making a bunch of artwork for stocking our booth for going and traveling to different like craft shows and stuff and conventions. And so if I'm able to spend the same $5, I'd rather get 10 different colors of beads than just one different color. So it might be something useful to keep in mind. So, and these are just little like enameled iron, um, copper toned beads. And the wire color that I'm using for our para wire is antique copper, and it has been plated like it's an enameled wire, so non tarnish. You don't have to worry about it turning your skin green or needing polished, which I personally really like that. So, whenever I put bead caps on our bead, you want to make sure that the cupped side is actually cupping the bead itself. And then the opening of our loop is right here on this side. And if you kind of think of the the strength of an S hook for like, you know, as opposed to just a carabiner. Um, so we want to do our wire as though it's like an S. Um, and so to do that, if the opening to our first loop is on the back side, and that's the side that's away from like the piece is between me and the back side, um, I'm going to bend my wire with my flat nosed pliers. I'm giving myself just like a hair of space to have room for my pliers to move into as we bend. Cause if we did it perfectly flush, it's gonna start like this is where it would, if this is a crystal bead, that pressure between the, the pliers and the bead would possibly chip the bead. So to avoid that, I just come out by just a little bit 
if you can see that there. And whoops, it's okay if things slip around. Yeah, and bend. Oftentimes going slower to try to explain every single detail uh, can make things kind of clumsy, but the more you practice, the more you'll get the hang of it. And now also determining how much length we should give ourselves, we need to consider ooh, ooh, what are we going to be doing with these links? Are we just going to be attaching it to a charm? Are we going to be hooking it to other links of the same wire uh, gauge? Are we going to be using two jump rings to attach each one? Because depending on what you're going to be doing with it, you might want to go with a slightly larger loop or a slightly smaller loop. Part of it's stylistic, but also you want your loop to be large enough that if you're putting two other rings into it, and we'll demonstrate this in a little bit, uh, you want those rings to be able to sit comfortably. You, you don't want them pinched because then it won't quite lay correctly. So I usually, just as a standard, try to give myself about a centimeter or maybe like 12 millimeters worth of wire. But the thicker that your wire is, the more space you're wanting, you're going to want to give yourself. Um, so if this were a 16 gauge, I would have gone with a full 15 millimeters for that length. And if it were 20 gauge, I would have gone with maybe 8 or 10. So the thinner the wire, the smaller I make the loop. But again, a lot of that is just stylistic as well. So just lining up with the notch on my pliers. And again, I'm bracing with my bottom thumb to kind of just give me something to resist against. And then, un like, releasing the pressure, repositioning, and curving that back around. Now you could use any of your pliers, I prefer something with a flat nose because it grips better, to kind of wiggle them just a bit to make sure that that loop is nice and closed. And so that is how we make a simple bead cap or bead link with bead caps. And now here you can see it's kind of got a little bit of a wiggle to it. And so if we don't want that wiggle to be there, we can actually open it up just a hair. Actually, we don't want to open it up. We will insert our pliers and make that loop just a little bigger. That way it comes down and the metal rests against the bead cap and now we don't have as much of a wiggle. So that's a way that, you know, sometimes things don't go as we planned. So a whole lot of making jewelry or doing anything creative really is just uh, creative problem solving, um, embracing the chaos and just going with it. And so this is something that's really cool that even with this, just this one technique, you could buy a variety pack of bead caps or maybe make your own bead caps out of like wire or polymer clay or something. If you're already crafty but are just learning wire wrapping, you could take just this one technique and make what looks like a wide variety of designs, but it's still it's using that one foundation technique. Now, um, you could use these for attaching to pre-made store-bought charms. Like, I'll have linked down in the video description, um, right above where you would leave comments, uh, some other videos that we've done showing how to use wire wrapped links like this but you could make a bracelet you could use oh this is a project we'll be doing with scrap wire um you could make a little spiral and then attach it and attach an ear hook to the other end and now you have uh earrings if you made two spirals or you could do just one and attach a, a larger ring um or a wire wrapped bale or a store-bought bale to the top and you have just a pendant so Again, there's a lot of different ways to use this core basic technique. So next I'm going to show you guys how to do a double loop bead link. And this is for whenever I want something that's a little bit stronger. Because um, with these guys, I'm going to demonstrate. Now this is 16 gauge wire being linked together. I've just opened it. And you can see I've opened it kind of off to the side. That way it maintains its circular shape. And then I'm just going to hook the next link on. And then we'll go ahead and close that. 
making sure that links is closed as we can. Now I'm going to demolish this for science's sake, um, but I'm going to use, well, if it were science, I'd actually be using like a gauge or something to see how much pressure I'm applying. Oops, sorry for the loud noises. I'm going to use a stick mandrel through one end and I'm going to use my round nose pliers on the other. And so this is the 16 gauge and I'm really going to just, there we go, pull, it took a lot of pressure, but if you want to make sure that this does not happen, so you can see how that kind of pulled through. Um, if you want to make sure that this doesn't happen, what we would do is we would upgrade to doing a double loop because then you have to apply even more constant pressure and something even stronger than that is doing a wrapped loop. So let's go ahead and use another one of these eight millimeter beads and I'll be doing this with, um, yeah, an 18 gauge. Because sometimes I really like the substantial look of having two thicknesses of wire as opposed to just the one, um, especially if this is going to be an earring and it'll be hanging to where it's facing this way. Um, so just, again, more just reasoning behind. So I'm actually going to use one of the 10 millimeter. And again, I'm going to trim off about four or five inches of our 18 gauge wire. And this would be an instance where, like, let's say I'm using this as part of like a pendant or something, and I just want the metal part, the coming out of the ends to look a little bit more substantial. So what I would do is I'm going to come in by a measuring off the edge of my table. I'm going to give myself an inch and a half or about 40 millimeters or so. And I'm going to do a 90 degree bend. I'm going to trim the tip here to make sure it's nice and flat. And we could use our round nose pliers for this. Um, but you can see how my round nose pliers are tapered. So if I were to do this, it gets a little funky where, um, and I'll demonstrate on this one. So I'm trying to stack the coil side by side and you can see oh I gave myself way too much um but you can kind of see here this loop on the far end is larger than this loop on that end and that's just the nature of my round nose pliers and now we can do things to try to offset that like let me go ahead and snip that put it in the scrap pile so if I were to do this, I would actually, on my round nose pliers, come in and stack the spiral towards the tip. That way I can try to stay in the same location on my, my uh, plier tip without having it diminish. And that's how it looks without having done the bend. Now we can coil it in and then hold our pliers like so and then just bend that. And again, this is more for the aesthetic of just making sure that it looks nice and centered up on our bead. And then we can thread our bead on. And now um, you can make some design choices here where on this one, I had both of the coils built off into the same direction. So they're both built to the left of where they're exiting the bead if that makes sense, like if you're able to see that. And I just think that makes it nice for if I'm having it lay on a necklace, it makes the bead stick out a little bit more towards that side, or at least look like that. But let's do this one where they're offset. So this one's going to be built towards that side, and this one, the top one's going to be built towards the other side. And we're going to do this one with our round nose plier, or our mandrel pliers, sorry, on the smallest tip. And with this one, it doesn't matter which way. I'm, again, I'm going to trim off that pointy tip. Since we're using our mandrel pliers, it doesn't matter which way we train the spiral because it's just a tube. It's not tapered at all. 
though I'm gonna build it towards my hand like towards my pliers uh, that way it's opposite of how we did the first time and I'm just bringing this around and oh, you can see if we don't have enough material then our loop doesn't go all the way around so I tend to try to want to give myself more than what is necessary, but we did use up quite a bit of it demonstrating to start with. So again, I always use my hand just as like a rough gauge because I usually have my hands on me when I'm wire wrapping. Um, so this is about three inches. So again, we'll come in and let's do both ends on the mandrel pliers this time. And I'm just kind of grabbing and then rolling with it pressed into my thumb. You can actually see it dimples me. Uh, it looks worse than what it is, though. And so there's that. I'm going to grab this with my round nose pliers just so we can do that boop, that little bend, make it look like a balloon. And now we will thread on our 10 millimeter bead. And then I'm going to come in and let's go ahead and do our bend like that using our flat nose pliers and I'm gonna trim it down to where it's about an inch and a half that should be enough and again I'm gonna want to stack it opposite of how it was and I just open it to rotate grip and turn again with that room room motion of my hand and now this has taken us farther than what we need to go but we can get in there and trim it with our wire snips I'm just wiggle to release that and I'm just gonna come in and I want to snip Whoop. usually when I snip I try to put my fingers over it that way it doesn't like pew and get me um, and then from here we can grip and come in just a little bit tighter on both sides if we don't want any wiggling with our bead and so now you can see we have but if you have a little pokey outy bit and you don't like that if you're using a bare copper or a sterling silver wire you can totally file that down or you can come in with your flush cutters and cut at a diagonal so that it kind of tapers it in I'll do that again on this side so I'm just coming in a little bit of a diagonal Whoop, there it goes and you just want to like pet it with your finger or even run it over some knit clothing and if it's not snagging I think you're pretty good to go but if that little loop like that little end of the loop like that bothers you then we move on up to a wrapped loop so let's go ahead and try that now so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit before we started the next segment about wire gauges and why I choose particular wire gauges for different things beyond the aesthetic and like bead types and stuff. Um, for like I demonstrated with this one, um, you want your jewelry to break. You don't want your jewelry to be stronger than you. <laughs> that way if your wrist gets caught on something, it is very much preferable to have the bracelet not necessarily easily break but have a point where it will break before there's damage to you or your skin or you know something like that so um, that being said whenever I use like just doing simple wrapped bead links like this with no wrapping or anything like the simple links I tend to use a 16 or 18 gauge whichever again the thickest that my bead can comfortably accommodate for the wrapped loops I tend to use either an 18 or 20 gauge. I don't feel like it's necessary with an 18 gauge. I usually just do the wrapped loop for like the aesthetic of it. But with a 20 gauge, unless I'm doing an earring or something with a very small loop, um, I don't know how much I trust the 20 gauge for doing just a simple link like this um, just because it does pull apart significantly more easily and I really think I do need to get some of those like pressure gauges where you can tell how much force is being exerted and really see how much force it takes to break in a 16 versus an 18 versus a 20 gauge um, just to you know science <laughs> now 
Uh, for the wrapped loops, though, I love using the 20 gauge because you can get a really nice, um, just good looking bead that way, especially, and if you want it to like be a little bit more substantial, you can do that double loop. Now I'm just going to demonstrate how to do the single loop, but always know doubling or even possibly tripling the loop is always an option for you. And I'm going to use about six inches. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, that's just five inches. <laughs> um, I'm going to use five inches of our 20 gauge wire and I'm going to give us ooh, three finger width about like that. So what is that? Two inches. And I'm going to bend at a right angle with our flat nose pliers. And then we can come in and I'm just going to use my round nose pliers for this. gripping like so. I'm going to press the short end of our wire up and around and then shifting my hand position I'm going to bring it around the rest of the way so that it's looking kind of like so. And now from here this is where I really like my bent nose pliers. I'm going to grab just the end of our short tail here and wrap around and I'm not squeezing to death with my left hand. We could truly let go of those, whoops, well not entirely let go. We want it just enough that it won't slide off, but uh, it's a tendency, uh, for me at least it was, I would just almost cut through my wire, I'd be squeezing so hard. You don't have to be squeezing super hard. So there's one, two, and I usually do at least two, but I like three, it's just a nice round number. Like I know it's not like a round round number, but I just like the way it looks. And then we're gonna come in and give it a snip. Boop, just like so. And now from here, we can thread our bead on. Now also, we could make a bead link, just like this one here, or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get wild with it. And let's do a four millimeter bead and then a six millimeter bead. And you could incorporate metal beads and all sorts of stuff like rondels and bead caps and different things of the sort. And an eight millimeter and then a 10 millimeter. And then let's work our way back down. And hopefully we'll have enough space. But this is, um, I think they're called bar necklaces. But this is a very easy design that's very well received. It's one of our best sellers because you can take and do birthstones. Like usually um, you can take like the birthstones of each member of a family or, you know, just whatever your clients are looking for. String it up like so. You could use faceted beads. Like it really, really showcases nice beads and I love doing these with um I make some lampwork glass beads let's see if I have any on hand really <laughs> well <laughs> I do I promise I <laughs> make lampwork glass I'm not just a crazy person I am probably also but that's not okay I'm gonna keep rummaging here we go this is super professional let's just rummage through my probably try to edit this part out if I remember to. Well, good gravy, what on earth did I do with them? I didn't, there they are. Oh, and actually in the last place we looked. Um, so, you could take lampwork glass beads or different things and showcase them with like other beads in line as well. Um, and this is a great way of doing that. So whether you're using one bead or a bunch of beads, um, the technique remains the same. So now we'll come to the other end and I'm going to, now I worry that this might not be enough wire, but we'll see. If it's not, we can just snip it and try again. Giving myself enough room, we can try to look at how much space those coils take up. So I'm going to come in just a little tighter. There we are. Give it a nice 90 degree bend. Going to be using the same marked place on my pliers to bring that up and around. Oh yeah, I don't know if this is gonna be enough. <laughs> Oops, well, we'll see. That is all right. And now we're gonna come in, 
grab with our pliers and wrap once. I don't know, it might be enough. Twice. And again, this is why I really, really love these round nose pliers because I can just get in there and kind of smush it around. Now we have a choice whenever, like if we know that we're going to be attaching chain or more bead links to each end of this, we can kind of choose which side is going to be the front side of the pendant because we could also do like a focal point that's hanging down. Like if we did a wire wrapped cabochon or something of the sort, we could have that hanging down from this and then we can make sure that we have the snipped ends of our wire facing what will be the back side. So I'm just going to come in here and snip. And you can see, hopefully, how I've got just a little bit of excess poking out. And that's specifically so that I can come in. You can grip your loop, not through the loop, but holding both sides of the loop as well, if that's more comfortable for you. And then just smush that tail end down. And that is how we can make a bar necklace. And if you used 16 gauge, it would be a little bit stiffer and you could leave it just straight. Some folks like that. Some folks, I personally like a little bit of a bend to it. Just it adds a little bit of a graceful curve. So again, same technique, but with just that little bit of a difference can give you something really unique. So now from there, that was our wrapped link. Let's move on now to doing an elegant wrapped link where we add in those two framing wires. So I'm going to duplicate this wrapped, elegant wrapped bead. Um, and we're going to be using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches. Oh, well, let's make it eight just because I'd hate to run short. And again, Parawire is affordable enough that I don't have to be stingy with it. Um, and I love, even if you prefer working with like sterling silver or, you know, silver filled or something like that, it's a really good idea to prototype out designs in copper or enameled copper wire just so you can really work out the kinks and get a good idea of how much wire you actually need so that you're not having, you know, a bunch of little chunks of uh, scrap wire not wasted because there's always you know metal reclamation and stuff like that but um it's just good i guess <laughs> so i'm going to start in the center as opposed to starting in from one end and we only really need with an eight millimeter bead about the pad of our finger width so like maybe two centimeters so i'm going to come right here and bend off to the side and we're going to do a wrapped loop so let's go ahead and use our mandrel pliers just to get some experience on those and uh well we're doing a wrapped loop but i'm doing a double loop and so i want my both of my loops to be the same size so i'm going to come around once remove my pliers reinsert them so that they're not in the way of our wrapping wire and continue around. Now I want to make sure that I'm not crossing these wires over each other because that can get in the way of how smoothly this lays and interacts with the other beads that we're going to be including on our piece. And so now we have both of those wires around our mandrel pliers and I'm going to wrap once. And I just like using my pliers because it <laughs> makes my hands last a little longer. Twice and thrice around and we're not going to cut it so now if we wanted to do just a double loop wrapped link we would go ahead and cut it but let's thread on our eight millimeter bead now I'm going to say it's my personal preference that I don't much care for using bead caps with this wire wrapping but that's entirely personal preference so um, but there's no reason not to except for just preference. So now we will come through and we want to make, if this is three millimeters, I want to leave three millimeters of space over here as well. 
and I'm going to bend our wire. You can see on this side, we had bent it towards ourselves. So on this side, I'm bending away. I'm going to use the same size loop on our mandrel pliers. Now this is what I mean by the mandrel pliers are slightly less versatile than my round nose because here I'm having a difficult time fitting the jaw of the pliers all the way up to where I want it to be. Whereas with my round nose pliers, I could come in and they fit whoop, right in there. But every obstacle is just an obstacle. It doesn't mean we can't get around it. We just have to kind of think creatively and uh, figure it out. So I'm going to wrap like that and then just bend this around until it's lined up. And I'm going to remove my pliers, put them back in, and wrap. I'm going to bend this one, boop, out of the way just a little bit. It's a lot easier to work when your wires aren't crossed. And now from here, I'm going to grab them with my pliers and wrapping. I'm trying to keep these wraps very shoulder to shoulder on each other. There's once, twice, and and also feel free to remove and reposition your pliers as much as you need to. Okay, so now we're here. Our wires are going off in opposite directions, and if they're not, we can still we can still figure it out. Um, but I want to wrap around. I'm coming out on the left side of our bead, and I'm coming around onto the right side. And so from here, and I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers, like so. And I'm gonna wrap once, twice, and thrice. And now I'm gonna come around to the other side again. If it's exiting on the left side of our bead, I want to wrap it across to the right side. And then just bracing with my fingers, we're going to wrap once, twice, and thrice. Now you could do some little loops. You could have added beads onto that. We could go through and do a second wave if we wanted to, like a little second decorative uh, accent, but I'm just going to come in, whoops, <laughs> almost threw my pliers again, uh, I'm just going to come in, I'm going to open it back up just a little bit, just lifting enough that I can fit my pliers in there comfortably, and snip, I'm going to do that same thing on the other side, so I'm just lifting it, just that little bit, enough that I can get my pliers in there, snip, And now we can take our flat nose or bent nose pliers and smush that little bit of tail wire down so that it's not poking or snagging on anything. There we are. That is an elegant wrapped loop, or at least that's what we call them. And sometimes they might look prettier from one side than from another, but eh, again, personal preference. So these would be perfect, I think, for adding onto, like making earrings out of, because they'll be, you know, right there, like earrings are great for like being very visible because, you know, they're like next to your face. <laughs> so we could take, if we had some little charms that we had made or something, and we could attach with a jump ring. Or if you wanted some dangly earrings, there's a product called a head pin that is just like, mm, I don't know if I have any directly on hand. And we'll probably get more into that in the future. Um, oh, I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of rummaging to be able to find that, aren't I? Well, here's a little bit of chain mail that we can use too. Well, you could use a head pin that's kind of like a nail, like it has like a nail head, but then the wire comes out and it's just like a straight wire, 
and it's a great way of threading beads onto something and making like a little it, let me rummage okay so here's some examples of head pins this is how most of the head pins that I use are shaped and some of them if you get them super cheap they will not be centered bah. but if they're cheap enough you can just go through and pick out the good ones um, or you can hide that I really like using the cheap ones for like in embedding inside polymer clay because again you can see if you thread a little bead on there it's like not seamless very very not seamless um but if you make like a little polymer clay bead you can shape around that and that head pin keeps that wire from pulling out um there are decorative head pins like this one which i almost even wouldn't even consider this like a, a head pin but it was listed, I think I got these from Fire Mountain Gems, and it was listed in with the head pins. But this one you could add like a little charm or something to, and it's just very cool. You could add some beads up this way, or you could attach this end to the ear hook and attach some beads and have another dangle. So they're very fun little design elements to use. I also really, really like um, decorative head pins and ball pins like these guys, because you can take something like this and just thread a bead on it and then maybe put a bead cap on the other end and it's just boom fast easy cute super like love it uh but yeah so those are head pins so you could attach head pins to these you could just have a little charm hanging down which if i were to do that we could just open up our charm as though it were a jump ring and hook that onto the end and then close it but sometimes you have to worry about orientation like if I wanted this part of the bead to be presented forward but then the charm attaches perpendicular to it um, what I would do to fix that this is an instance where I highly recommend even if you have zero interest in weaving chainmail working with jump rings quality jump rings can make such a big difference in your jewelry now these I've gotten from theringlord.com and these are just some wee wee bitty little um, bronze, I think. Well, those ones are linked together. Um, there we go, we got a couple loose ones. But you can get them in different sizes. These I think are a 22 gauge, um, 1 8 inch or possibly, I don't know, something smaller than that but these are probably my favorite go-to size and that is 18 gauge um standard wire gauge 1 8 inch rings and those are very substantial and I try to make most of my jewel like most of my loops be accommodating to two of that size so what I would do is I would come in and you can see how the jump rings are cut in such a way that they're a little offset um, you'll want to close it beyond that just because, you know, points for effort, but you don't want it getting tangled in hair. You don't want it coming apart easily. So we would just hook it through both of the things that we're wanting to attach and then close it. And then we would take our second ring and open it. Now, technically we don't have to use more than one that will hold it together. But a lot of jewelry is the aesthetic of it, like just the look we're wanting to go for. And I think having two rings, or more, sometimes I like doing three, gives it a much more substantial, solid, intentional look. Especially for like if you have bracelets or something. But you can see how they both sit comfortably side by side. And it isn't so tight that one is like pinched up higher than the other or something. Um, and that's the same technique that I use for joining bead links into charms like we had talked about or if you are into weaving chainmail you can weave sections of chainmail like here we have a little segment of Byzantine and I know that the color tones don't match up but bear with me so let's say uh, you know one chainmail weave and uh, this okay personal story I knew one chainmail weave, maybe two, but I was still figuring out the second one. 
Um, and I was fixing to do, I think the show was Christmas in Lynchburg. It was our second craft show ever. Um, and so what we ended up doing is I had like five or six different gemstone bead types and I was able to go through and I didn't even have any bead caps back then. Um, cause like we started with like nothing, <laughs> but you know, crafting life, um, you can weave segments of the same chainmail weave, but depending on how you accessorize it with different um, gemstone colors and possibly even wire colors, uh, you can give yourself a wide variety of products in your booth or in your online store or anything like that. And you just hook through and then close that loop. And then you have, and it, you, I mean, a bracelet is just a short necklace for your wrist. So if you can make it as a bracelet, then you can make it longer and make it into a necklace. And it just adds a whole lot of variety and is a great way of turning one, one or two techniques and one core design into 10 or 20 different pieces of art for inventory for your booth or website. So I know that not everybody is interested in crafting for, uh, you know, a business, but just in case you are, just something that I would have liked to have known, because <laughs> we were freaking out whenever we were like, how do we, because we thought, you know, we're handmade jewelry, everything needs to be 100% original and unique, and, you know, we can't have two pieces looking the same in our booth, and it's like, no, <laughs> that's, in our experience, that's not the case, unless you really want it to be like that, but just know, you don't have to anything you know you have to do what your heart calls you to so go do that but that's how we join that together to the chain mail and now our next and final link that I'm going to show y'all how to make is for if you um, don't have any thick wire like let's say if you signed up for our happy crafter club and are in one of our booty box memberships where we send out like in our ten dollar booty box we just send out cabochons and like wood cuts um that are like little wood burnt charms that you can use in your jewelry but in our twenty dollar and up booty boxes we send our handmade cabochons as well as woodcuts and wire. So let's say it's your first month and you've just gotten a thin gauge, like 26, because we try to mix it up. Like we try to send anywhere between 16 and 28 gauge and a couple of different metal tones and stuff, just whatever we can get our hands on really. Um, but it's still possible to make a wire wrapped link even with very, very thin, delicate wire. You just have to, again, it's just another obstacle to figure out how to work our way around. So I'm gonna set these off to the side. Here I'm gonna be using 26 gauge. I've done this as thin as 28 gauge. I don't think I'd recommend it for 30 gauge, but you do you, like go ahead and try it. Just cause I wouldn't do it doesn't mean it shouldn't be done. So, uh, and I'm going to snip off about seven or eight inches of wire. And I really love this for if you have very, very tiny beads um, or if you only have the size of wire. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be doing this with our four millimeter beads. And we're going to start with, this is something I'm going to use our stick mandrel for. And I'm going to use the third segment down on our stick mandrel. And I'm going to come just a little off from center, about an inch off from center, and I'm going to wrap once, twice, and thrice around our mandrel. So just like that. I'm going to try zooming in. I apologize in advance if I wander out of frame. That's just kind of what I do. I don't mean to, but here we are. So same basic idea. We've just tripled it. That way it's a little bit more wire holding on. And now I'm going to come in and I'm using my fingernail to really keep that wire positioned up where we want it to be. So there's one, I'm actually going to zoom in like super close. There's one little loop. We're going to bring this around. Now this is the least beginner friendly of all the techniques that I've shown. There's two. just because it can be so finicky. And three. And I'm just twisting 
around trying to make sure that I'm twisting our wrapping wire around our core wire. I've lost count. That's one, two, three, four, I think. So let's go ahead and do a fifth one to grow on. And bring that around. Now you can see it's not quite as close up to the other one, so I'm just going to hold the core wire and press with my fingernails. You could also use your pliers just to get that nice and kind of smushed up there. I'm going to leave all of this tail wire on. We're going to thread on our bead. I'm going to pick one that doesn't fit onto our 18 gauge wire. And this is perfect for like, oh, I'd gotten some strands of beautiful, genuine four millimeter citrine. Like, hadn't been treat heat, heat treated or anything. But the hole in it is like tiny, <laughs> like 24 gauge barely fits. So this is a technique that I would use. I'm so sorry, I wandered out of frame. Um, well, there goes the bead. Okay. Okay, so we threaded the bead on there. Whew. And now we get to pull this off of the mandrel, kind of just wiggle and pull through. Now you want to be very careful right now to not hold on to the bead and pull the wire because it will start to pull I want to zoom back out, otherwise I'm going to keep wandering out of frame. Um, if you pull on this core wire, it can pull all of these wires tighter. Like, I'm going to kind of demonstrate real quick. Do you see how it started pulling that little loop? So, uh -oh. so if that happens, just use our round nose pliers. To thread it back on there and then use the pliers as a mandrel to just pull that back down so it's something to be mindful of it's not the end of the world but be mindful of it so now we're going to be wrapping on the other end and with wire this then i don't really worry about making sure it's at a perfect 90 degree angle protrusion from the loop like bah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make sure that we've got enough space on the other side to do those same wraps. So we're going to wrap once, twice, and thrice. Smush those wraps down on top of each other. I'm going to have that end come out of the way so our wires aren't getting crossed. And then just wrapping. It's a little bit more cumbersome with the bead and stuff in the way, but you can do it. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the project. Like everybody, just about everybody I've ever talked to or tried to help through, like I've like emailed and they're like, oh my god, I'm learning how to wire wrap and I'm just terrible at it. And it's like, well, I mean, you're a beginner. You're supposed to be terrible at it. Like if you weren't terrible at it, I'd be like, you know, not concerned, but like, I'd be like, yo, teach me, teach me your tricks. Um, you know, it's good to be bad at something in the beginning because you'll never be that bad at this ever again. Like everything that you do from here, you're learning, you're building a foundation. So this is not a time to be hard on yourself and expect perfection. This is a time to embrace the chaos, embrace the mess, and just enjoy falling in love with a new craft. So that would be my wish onto you guys is that if you take anything else away from this, it's just to have fun crafting. So otherwise, what's the point? Okay, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm not getting my wires crossed and I cannot see because my eyeballs. Um, so I'm going to zoom in even closer to try to see. So that was three wraps. I'm going to come up and around. Used to, folks would use those magnetic lamps, but now, I mean, ever since I've started shooting tutorials uh, and have like a tripod next to my workstation all the time, I just put my camera on the tripod because it can see better than my eyes can. And I'm going to do one more. And I realize my thumb's in the way, but that's just how I have to hold it. Now, sometimes. Let's go ahead and slide that off of there because sometimes things can be a little lumpy with our wraps and that can be hopefully easily fixed with our handy dandy bent nose pliers. We can just come in and smush the heck out of it. Eh, that didn't work, but that's okay because we're going to hide it in the second layer. Oh no, I did just what I recommended not doing. So let's put that on there. 
and push that on down. There we go. I'm also going to try to straighten this out just a little bit more. There we are. Very cool. So now from here, we have our little bead with our little wire. And we're going to wrap. Now this one's on the right side, so we're going to bring it around to the left. And then we can go ahead and do that same thing on the other side, just getting those crosses to happen. And you don't have to have it hug very close to the bead. Um, again, you could do this stylistically and have it be all sorts of different ways. But we're just going to wrap, and I'm holding with my thumb, just keeping that wire in place. And I'm going to wrap once, twice, thrice, four times, and five times. Like a little scarf. If this is the head and this is the body, we want that to be a nice stacked scarf. So coming around. So again, we can hide our imperfections if they do not please us. Because I always, if it's imperfect, I just call it organic. So then it's like, because people can't be like, oh, that's not right. I'm like, it's art. It doesn't have to be right. There's no right. Okay, so that one still came out a little messier. But let's see if we can't do it better a second time. So we can unwind, straighten that wire out just with our finger. You could use some nylon gel pliers too. So we're going to take that and go once. Trying to make sure I'm still in frame. Twice. It's a little lumpy, so it's always going to be a little lumpy, but that's okay. There we are. There's our wrapped loops. So, hmm, I'm not a perfectionist because, like, I have perfectionist tendencies, but if I indulged them, I'd never get anything done because nothing's ever as perfect as I want it to be. So you can just take it and kind of smush it a bit. <laughs> now, also, there's a product called uh, crimp bead covers that you could take. This is a thin enough wire and you could take that crimp bead cover that looks kind of like a, um, like a, I don't know, like a C, like it's hollow, like it's concave in this area. And you can put it around a bead boop, and close it. And it makes it look like, like if you, if you get good at closing them, it can look like a seamless bead, but it can cover you know, I've decided I'm just going to demonstrate. So I dug some out and they aren't like color matched or anything like that. I get these from uh, Fire Mountain Gems because I really prefer the solid copper ones as opposed to the enameled alloy that I can find on Amazon or AliExpress. And um, I know that Fire Mountain Gems isn't always the most affordable option, but I really, and, and again, this is not sponsored. Like we're actually a fan sponsored uh, channel. So uh, it's y'all support by watching and uh, participating in our shop updates and our happy crafter club and things like that that keep the continuation of more free tutorials going. But I don't like getting paid to have opinions. Uh, that way I don't feel, you know, obligated to say nice things about a company. But Fire Mountain Gems has consistently been very transparent about the materials that their components are made out of. And I trust them. Uh, you know, as a professional and as a hobbyist, it's if they say something's lead free, I trust them that it's lead free. If they say that it's solid copper, I trust them that if it were to get melted down and tested, it would actually be solid copper. Um, so that's why I recommend them to folks. You may be able to find more affordable options on the market, but sometimes you don't know what you're getting. But with Fire Mountain Gems, I always feel confident that I know what I'm getting. <clears throat> so we're going to come through and snip this wire nice and flush as much as we can and again so we've bent it around almost way more than what we need and then we open it back up and that just helps to put a little bit more of a curve into the wire and so we're getting it in there snipping smushing <clears throat> give it the old snip and smush when in doubt, smush it out. <laughs> so now what we would do is we can take this bead cap, this crimp cover, sorry, and possibly, if it's open enough, if it isn't, we can take 
our pliers, put them inside that opening, and then open them a little bit more. <clears throat> and we can put that around the wires that we'd like to cover. Now, oh, well, I don't have the tool. I, I usually use my crimp pliers because they have like a round, let me go grab them. These are my crimp pliers. Um, so you can see, like normally if you had a crimp bead, and we'll go over that in future tutorials, um, but you would crimp it in this kidney bean shaped section first and then round it out in this other one. And I use the one towards the tip here for, <clears throat> let's get everything lined up. I just like holding on to that crimp cover. Whoops. Oh, well, that one's lost forever. Um, <clears throat> let's grab the other one and try that. So this may have worked better if I didn't, or if I used a larger crimp cover, but I just wanted to demonstrate the concept a little bit. So again, we're going to open that one up. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, I gotta go find more bead caps, like crimp covers. Good news, I found both of them. Okay, so let's try this again. And it can be kind of fiddly trying to cram all the wire in there. So we are going to want to open that up just a little bit more first. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again placing my pliers in there and then just slowly carefully opening then I'm going to rest that there we go that cupped really nicely so if you see how that's holding around it it's almost like if the center part were a seed and this were a little pod around it <clears throat> and so I'm going to grab just like so and start squeezing down to bring those ends together and I like to squeeze from both sides and so that's something that we can do if you prefer that look but still want a little wire wrapped link and the biggest reason why I prefer, <clears throat> excuse me, these copper crimp covers is they're more malleable and they round out more nicely. I'm going to ha have to grab a fresh one, but I think you get the idea over here on this. And also if you use the copper ones, then they can be oxidized and polished really nicely as well. So. You have options here between the wrapped side or the, the crimp cover side. Or you could just go neither or no, no crimp cover. Just have it look like that. So this is how I make all these different styles of wire wrapped bead links. I really hope that this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our Happy Crafter Club. It starts at as low as a dollar a month, uh, and that gets you access to our 20% off coupons, to our shop updates. It gives you uh, early access to our shop updates. Um, access to our Friday live stream after parties and all sorts of different things and the more like the higher membership level you get the or you join the more you get so with the uh, booty boxes and stuff like that and if you would like to get notifications about future tutorials you can sign up for our free newsletter again at backtoearthcreations.com and uh, we send out an email about 30 minutes before our live stream start uh, before or rather before our premiere start um, and that way you'll never miss a thing so we look forward to seeing you guys in our next video so until then happy crafting Mwah! bye <laughs>
one more thing I wanted to show you guys before we go. Now, I have a tendency of just joining the ends of my wrapped links with like jump rings or putting a bit of chain mail between them or maybe a charm or something. But there is a way <clears throat> that you can join them together without having to use just simple links. Because th that is a tendency that I can do as well, is that we would have... Um, like let's say maybe like a rosary style necklace or something of the sort where it's made entirely of bead links um, joined by simple bead links because how they open on both ends and then just kind of use that to join the two pieces together and the way that I would do that is just here with my bent nose pliers or you could use your tapered flat nose or chain nose or something I would open one end <clears throat> excuse me about midway through shooting this tutorial I like breathed in a dog hair or something and like died half to death like <laughs> so please forgive me clearing my throat in your ear all day we would hook it through the loop and then close it and then come around open that end hook it through and close it and that's a fun way of being able to make necklaces and bracelets and things but if you want all of it to be just wrapped loops which is a really great way of making like a oh if you buy reading glasses or something and want to make a chain that's very very durable and isn't going to snag and isn't going to pull apart and lose your glasses this would be what i would recommend so i'm going to be using the 20 gauge making a single loop wrapped link with Let's scavenge this eight millimeter bead from the uh, demolition demonstration. Just pulling that apart. And what we would do from here is I'm going to <clears throat> give us about six inches and we'll make the wrapped link. Like I, I like to make the link that's attached to the previous link first. Is that 20 gauge or 18 gauge? That's 20 gauge. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to come to a little more than, like if this right here is the halfway mark, I'm coming off to the side by just a bit. And we'll go ahead and fold that, or bend it to a little over a 90 degree. Place our pliers, and wrap this around to this point. And then I would thread this through, just like so. And this is where I feel like having the tapered flat nose really come in handy because we can hold on, we're holding on to both sides of the loop because you don't want to just hold on to one edge of it. You want to be holding both edges of it <clears throat> without getting in the way of where you want your wrapping to happen. And so we're going to grab that with our bent nose pliers and wrap once, twice, and thrice. <clears throat> and I'm going to come in and snip, Boop. oops, and smush. And then we would thread our bead on and continue along like that, making the other wrapped loop on the other end. And we could just craft the day away. So, okay, that's, that's the last thing I wanted to show you guys. Um, I think I've shown you guys everything that I know about wire wrapped links. So it's a very foundational basic technique, but I use it in almost every single project. And the more you practice with this, the more you're going to build your uh, mind plier coordination. Um, because sometimes it can feel a little bit clumsy working with pliers instead of just your hands. And the more you practice that and kind of get good at um, or get better at anticipating how the wire might behave, that skill and that knowledge is going to benefit you through all other wire wrapping projects. So bye for realsies this time. I really look forward to seeing y'all in lesson two. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye for real. <laughs>